Hi, and welcome back. I'm Dr. Andrew Duggleby, and in this high-speed flight deep dive, I'm going to go into design. So last time we kind of did broad overview, everything from, you know, how hard things are done through design, build, test, and fly. And in this episode, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about design. And so ultimately, you know, I showed this sort of, you know, this is a DOD framework, but really design can go, can mean anything from figuring out like this material solution analysis, like what are you doing towards okay, I have an idea of what we're doing, now we need to, you know, flush out the design, mature the technology, do some key experiments. Um, design can even be down here in engineering manufacturing, right? If you've, if you've ever built things in real life, you understand that a lot of times, like, while well, design, people might think design is over here and it's glorified. Wow, like sometimes manufacturing is, is actually really where it's hard. You have to think through um, processing and, and throughputs and costs and manufacturing and you know, and then if you're a company, say like Tesla, and then you're trying to make, you know, this massive assembly line, a lot of times manufacturing can actually be 10 times harder than what we typically glorify in the world of design, which is up here. And then you get into production and, and development. And, you know, there's this old uh, technology readiness level scale, if you've heard of it, kind of one being, I have an idea, nine to it's flown. And in the aviation industry, there's also, they've sort of unofficially extended the tier all 10, 11, and 12. So if Tyrrell 9 is it's flown, Tyrrell 10 is it's received a certification, and Tyrrell 11 is you've made your first 100 units, and Tyrrell 12 is they've been operational for a decade. And so, so design can really mean anything along that pipeline. But I want to first highlight, actually, in, in the world of design, because be, this could be true in any one of these, I'm actually going to give a lot of props and credit to Elon Musk, who's, you know, it's not called the Musk algorithm, but the, the process of how you go through and really uh, make your design efficient. And so the first one is back to questioning every requirement. And, and I've seen that in every organization I've been in. You know, what is this requirement? Where did it come from? Who wrote it down? Who owns it? You know, because it could be the person wrote it down wrong. It could be the person that wrote it down is left three years ago. It could be they wrote it down in one place and now it's actually stored here in a different place. So that one's an absolute, um, you know, it can completely kill your your time and, and really delay a process, right? And then speaking about process, the step two is delete anything you can, anything that's not necessary to achieve it. If you can delete a part or a process, go for it. Uh, and if you've heard Elon Musk talk about it, he'll talk about like it's easy to add things back in. So you should be you should be stripping things away as fast as possible. And if you realize you really really needed it, then it's easy to add it back in. Okay? Then it's simplify, simplify and optimize. You know, honestly, the uh, when we when we talk about what really drives timelines, a lot a lot of times it's it's rework, it's dumb work, and it's stupid work. So stupid work would be, you know, I would kind of refer that as as a stupid requirement. Uh, rework is something that is so complicated over here that you have to do it again. It's it's you know, first time quality is brutal. So you know. It's nothing more brutal if, say, you're welding and you, you weld it all up, you get inspected, there's a crack, you gotta, you gotta grind it all out. And so that, that would be a rework. It can be just absolutely painful. Uh, and so, you know, if you can simplify what you're doing, then optimize it. And the second part of that simplification is oftentimes, you know, give engineers, l listen to your gut a little bit here. Like, that, we, a lot of times we wanna talk about STEM as being, you know, very logical, very um, deterministic. And the answer is, a lot of times, what you came up with in the first two hours is right. But then you spend two days, you know, going over it again or double checking yourself or, or, or being a little bit insecure. And so, honestly, simpler is always better. And, and trust, trust that initial design way more than you, you give yourself credit for. And, and let it see the light of day. Get it in front of others. Let, you know, write your bad ideas down. That's one of the things we say here at Venus. Write your bad idea down. So. It can either be completely squashed quickly and you're done with it, or someone can see that and modify it, and the next thing you know, you've actually got a great idea. And then you want to accelerate your cycle time, whether that's throughput of your, your product or throughput of your, your testing or throughput of your, you know, your test flight schedule, whatever it is. And then step five is automate. And, and you know, I really list, guide you over to Elon Musk. He's got a bunch of good interviews where he's talked through this. Um, this, this truly encapsulates, you know, what we sort of in new aerospace, if you will, have, have spent learning over the last couple of decades. Okay. And so I, I'm going to 
really highlight at the front end. And then, you know, honestly, later this week, I'm going to release a couple, I guess we'll call them like deeper -er dives, really into the aerodynamic side of what we're doing. And so they'll be pretty heavy. So the, that'll be for, you know, engineers who were really, really curious. And then I'll have sort of three small episodes on that. And then I'll have four small episodes on the detonation ramjet, sort of really down in the weeds. So, you know, not necessarily for uh, general public consumption, but if you're, if you're technical enough, you want to follow along, we'll, we'll release that and dig in. So I'm just going to finish here at sort of that top level. Uh, because ultimately, I've, I've observed, too, that many engineers, you, you become an engineer and you're trained up in a certain discipline. Maybe it's propulsion, maybe it's avionics structures. Um, and it, it takes a while in your career before you start seeing the full picture. And honestly, um, that really can hurt design cycle timeline if you don't have that full appreciation of where it goes. So, you know, it, it's called system engineering and system engineering has a very bad rap out in the world. The answer is it's just how does everything fit together? And in a later episode, we'll actually talk about the kind of the business side of things where, you know, you're building things for a business. So you have to, you have to frame it from a cost point of view, but, but just sticking here at the sort of systems engineering point of view, you might look at a system an aircraft that has a weight, <laughs> this is really simple, and the weight of that aircraft would be the weight of all the structure, that would be wings and, and frames, plus the weight of any of the systems involved, the bathrooms to pumps to, you, you name it, avionics, to the weight of the engine, the weight of the payload, you know, payload being humans or whatever it is, and then we'll put weight of the, say, the fuel or you know, prop propellant if you're, you know, generically, all, all the liquid juice you're carrying around with you. So uh, step two is just dividing by weight. And then, you know, I'm going to rearrange this. I, I meant to put this a little bit backwards. So we're going to combine and call this fraction C1. And that's to represent sort of all of the vehicle level structure and systems all into one. Uh, I'm going to put the payload here. So P is now a payload uh, fraction in terms of you know, percent of total weight. And one plus C2, well, the C2, where does it come from? Well, every payload takes a certain amount of hold. So if you're a human in aircraft, yes, generically a human is 150 pounds with 50 pounds of baggage, I get it. That's a 200 pound payload, but that human needs a chair to sit in. Um, they do need a bathroom to use, uh, they need drinks. Uh, oh, by the way, they need oxygen. So how are you, you know, bringing in the air? How are you filtering the air? Uh, things like that. So that would be, uh, oh, and it's, you're an aircraft, you're up at altitude, you've got to keep the human, um, you know, warm when you're up in the altitude. And all of us hate sweating when we're sitting on the ground, so you've got to have some sort of air conditioning system on the ground. Uh, so that would be all of that sort of extra weight uh, needed to hold that payload. Right? And then engine here, I'm going to switch colors, and I'm going to, I'm going to split this into two, from a, just from a Venus perspective for a couple of reasons. One is that generically, I'll write for generically, that this is the thrust to weight of the vehicle divided by the thrust to weight of the engine. And then likewise, there's some C3, takes some amount of stuff to hold it. Now, um, thrust to weight of say a jet engine might be seven. Thrust to weight of a rocket might be, you know, 50 to 70. And so, you know, it can change quite a bit. And if you're trying to go, say, supersonic, the thrust to weight, you might need something that is um, greater than one. And so, you know, the um, weight size, if you're, if you're trying to do this whole thing with a jet engine, be able to go through the speed of sound, it actually turns into be a pretty massive system. It could be a 15% 15, 15 mass system. Um, now, I'm going to relate that back to what Venus is doing because we have the detonation ramjet. Uh, so I'm going to sort of highlight a second one here, the thrust to weight over thrust to weight of the engine. And I'm going to highlight that this is the cruise engine, the one plus C3. And so this might be the boost engine. And so for us, you know, we are going to have that, you know, high efficient rocket engine here with really good acceleration. And then at cruise, honestly, all we're going to need at cruise, well, what's the thrust needed at cruise? Well, that's actually drag. And then what's the weight at cruise? Well, that's lift. So this top term would actually, at the cruise condition, would turn into a drag over lift term. And then this is still thrust weight of that engine. So this might be okay for that ramjet to have a thrust weight of, say, seven. 
because the lift to drag, you know, uh, lift to drag might be five, so drag to lift is one over five. So the, the total weight of this system, if it's sort of just a ramjet for cruise, is a lot better. Okay? And then the last one here is then the fuel. And so, you know, fuel lambda is usually used as the kind of the, the weight of the fuel or weight total propellant compared to the system. But like everything else, it picks up this factor of how much it takes to hold that fuel. Now, this one really, really, really bugs me because uh, there's this thing called the wet wing in aviation. It was this massive innovation. And honestly, if it's jet fuel, it takes like almost nothing. So this might be like 0 0.005 because all you do is just throw the fuel in the wings. And all it takes, this extra mass is just for a couple baffles to, to make sure the wing is, you know, liquid tight. And that's it. That was really a massive innovation. To, to all the people out there trying to do hydrogen, hydrogen's hard. I mean, right now for hydrogen, uh, it might take something like 10 kilograms of equipment, tanks, insulations, you name it to hold one kilogram of hydrogen. So hydrogen, this could be 10. Now, if you make your hydrogen tank really, really big, maybe you're getting down to say three. It, th this still ultimately drives it. And then when you, you stack this whole thing together, hydrogen's got a ton of challenges. Uh, we're really gonna impact the range because it's gonna drive how much of this you can actually carry, okay? And so, you know, this is, this is the total level thing, but this is still, pretty broad. So I'll do like kind of one more level down. Uh, and this is where you, know, you might then have those level one requirements and you can then drive off and, and hand them to say the propulsion team or the aerodynamics team and things like that. So let's look at this Lambda. So that would be the amount of fuel or propulsion you need to boost, the amount you need to hold the cruise, and then you always have to carry some sort of, some sort of reserve. And so if you listened to the deep dive back in episode one, we went through you know, the rocket equation, that this, this would come from the rocket equation. This would be, you know, delta V is equal to ISPG, and then you'd have natural log 1 over 1 minus lambda boost, uh, and then this gets the penalty based on the thrust to weight and the lift to drag the system, okay? Your lambda C is going to come from the, the range equation, and so we'll write that one down just below, where, you know, the range equation would be sort of the heating value over G of your fuel times the propellant, propulsion efficiency, lift to drag the system, the natural log, uh, and this is gonna pick up, you know, where you left off with, and then you get to your cruise, get to your cruise condition. And so, um, you know, and then if you're then sort of the aerodynamicist, I'll just write this one in green. You know, I have lift to drag in a couple different places now, and just know that you know, your drag terms is going to be some amount of drag due to lift. Right? Every time you sort of increase your angle of attack, you, you have induced drag due to lift. You're going to have drag due to friction. So that would be the boundary layer is developing. You know, it's more friction if you switch over to turbulent. Uh, and then if you're supersonic, you're going to have a drag due to wave drag. Uh, and this is true, by the way, if you're like getting close to the speed of sound, it would be transonic drag that portions of your vehicle are starting to go over the speed of sound. And so this is really that, that highest level. And so, you know, if you're, if you're really interested in, in digging in a little bit more, like I said, we're gonna release this week, you know, kind of three really detailed episodes into sort of the aerodynamic side of this at the, the vehicle level. And then uh, four episodes sort of on the propulsion side here, kind of the detonation ramjet, if you wanna, if you wanna follow along. Otherwise, um, you know, the next deep dive, you'll get to hear from more of the team kind of, you know, on the build side and then the test side and the flight side. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.